Okay. Let's start right on time <laughs> to the minute. Great. Okay. So welcome to the early birds. I'm sure some other people will pop in, but um, we'll start as planned. And I'm also recording so everybody can go back and, uh, and check on the recording. So um, Emily, I want to present you <laughs> to everybody. Emily is my uh, office assistant, office manager. So um, it's a uh, it's a nice opportunity for you, Emily, to see some of our of our members, of our facilitators, and for you also to get a face to the name because Emily might be sending you some stuff in the future. So um, here right now we have. Tanya in New Mexico, Adriana in, um, in Mexico, Mexico country, <laughs> in, the, in the federal district, right? You're in the capital, right. yes? Yes. Mexico City Mexico and City. Martia in Spain. So it's already a very international group. Yeah, very diverse. <laughs> yes. And Emily is here with me in, in Cotacachi in Ecuador. And um, yeah, we had a beautiful day today. Very nice, a lot of sun, but not as much heat as everybody else. So <laughs> we're, on, we're on the good side. Okay, so today we are talking about family constellations or systemic constellations with horses. And specifically within our framework, which is horse guided empowerment or empoderamiento con caballos for those who do it in Spanish. And um, I will put everything that you have learned in our course as a foundation. And then we build on that to learn more about the way we can use the, the systemic idea. I will present you the, the foundations of that, the main ideas that we need to know in order to use that in the paddock. And then um, a way how to start, how you can interpret or how the horses will show us what is going on and um, and some examples and there is also a lot of room for your questions so please interrupt me whenever you want to and um, and ask questions it's best if this is an interactive class and um, and we develop it together some of you well Adriana is is newer <laughs> newer to this. Tanya is um, already experienced in, in leading sessions. Marty also for quite a while. So um, we'll see. We'll see who else joins us of all the twenty plus people who wanted to come. <laughs> um, and um, Adriana, if there is, um, if you need a translation, please let me know. It's not not a big. Uh, deal. It's fine. I, I think I understand everything. Uh... I might not be asking a lot of questions because I really have not much idea of this, but I, I really wanted to join and learn more from the beginning. So okay. nice to meet you all. Perfect. All right. Emily, I know that you have another meeting uh, going on soon. So um, stay as long as you can, as you want to, and, um, and then leave us for you. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. I appreciate it. I'm happy to be here and meet everybody. <laughs> All right. Okay. So let's start with our screen sharing. So today we will talk about first a little bit, what is a family constellation? What, what do we mean when we say that? What are the different uh, ways of doing it? Then I'll give you some foundations of the systemic theory, which is the, the foundation of the family constellation uh, therapy and how we can use these foundations in a session. Uh, I'll tell you, or we will explore together what the benefits are of including horses. You can also do this with people. Most therapists do it with people, um, but we are doing it with horses and I'll tell you why. Then uh, I'll present how we start the session. And then we'll talk a little bit about some limitations and precautions. It's a very specific, specialized way of leading a session. 
and there is some stuff that we should avoid. Okay, everybody ready? Let's dive in. Okay, so first of all, um, you all know this phrase. It is only with the heart that one can see rightly what is essential is invisible to the eye. We've all read that in the Little Prince book and um, we have also talked about it in our heart math classes where we talk about intuition and how we can sense things, how the heart can sense things even before the cognitive process and the brain is involved in it. And that is maybe the most important foundation for uh, doing systemic constellations with horses. If you trust your intuition, and if you listen with the heart, there is nothing that can go wrong. If you add too much thinking, analysis, logic, questioning, it can go all kinds of wrong. <laughs> so try to be as open as you can and also invite your client to be as open as they are able to. If they are looking at the horses in a very technical way, like, oh, this is a mirror, but, but I'm talking about a man, so, so that won't work, or how old is that one, or like this coat color, we are in the wrong direction. What we wanna do is feel. So even more than in a regular session, it's really important to just receive what is going on and then follow our intuition. For you as a guide, as the facilitator in that session, it is, you can use anything that comes to mind as a starting ritual, as a meditation, as a grounding, breathing exercises, anything you need to get your client to listen with their heart and to see with their heart. Christine, I have a quick question. So yes. um, in my experience, you know, I, as you know, I ended up doing a couple of these without, mm -hmm. it wasn't my intention to do them, it's just kind of how it unfolded. So as I'm listening to you, are these sessions, um, the way that you're describing it, is it, or do you start the session with that intention or do you allow it to unfold as such? I guess um, well okay, usually you either one. Yeah, in our in our regular horse guide empowerment sessions, there is very often an element of a constellation that just unfolds. It just happens. Mm -hmm. um, now we will talk about a session that is specifically directed towards let's do a constellation with horses. Okay. But then you can also mix them. So the purer you will want to do it, the more difficult it is. If it like slides into it naturally, then your client is already there. They, they already project the roles onto the horses. But if you want to start with that, it's, you know, it, it can sometimes be a little bit more difficult. Okay. But you are free to, to mix it as it, as it suits you. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, so how does, how does this constellation, what, what do we mean by a constellation? So this is, for example, a picture, a final picture of a constellation with my herd. And the man who said sitting there in the middle is a client. That's a couple of years ago. And um, this is something that happens very often in these kind of sessions that the horses will lay down that they will relax with the person specifically at the end of towards the end of the session so when you imagine a constellation you imagine the herd the horses representing people or elements in your client's life and then playing out acting out what is really going on in this person's life. So in this situation, for example, we had the protagonist that was uh, this horse over here, which is his father. Then here behind him, we have himself as a young person, as a young boy. Then we have mom, 
we have, um, I think this was an, an aunt or some other family members. So these are family members here. And then dad who is, who is staying at the side. Most of the time, a constellation will be around a family situation. Sometimes it can also be around coworkers or places or an illness. I had a constellation about neurodim um, neurodermitis. How, how is that? What neurodermitis? Is that a, is that a thing? <laughs> is that something like a like a, a skin a skin disease? So one of the horses was the disease. One of the horses was traditional medicine. One of the horses was anger. So that's also possible, right? So any element that is part of the situation that your client is presenting can have a role in this in this uh, constellation. Most of the time it's family members. When it is family members, you wanna make sure to uh, set the time of the constellation. So if somebody says, I wanna, um, I wanna explore something about my family. So in that situation, there is me and my sister and my brother and my stepdad and my grandmother, for example. And, um, and then you need to ask, what time is that? How old are you? Because sometimes people will mix it. They will think that this is a constellation of now, but then they think about family members who were present when they were young. So it's really important to set, when is the time of this constellation? Is it when you were five or is it now? Or is it 10 years ago? Anything is possible. Okay, somebody else just came in. Hello, hi, Susanna. So Costa Rica is joining us. <laughs> Hello. Hey, Susanna. Hey, Mercy, hi. good to see you. <laughs> Sorry, I'm joining late. I hope my signal holds. Don't Keep worry, we're, we're just starting with the, with the foundations. So um, okay. I just said that everybody is, is welcome to ask questions and um, we will explore the different concepts together. So don't hold back if you have a, a question or if you wanna go deeper somewhere. Yeah. Okay, great. <laughs> okay. So before we start with the actual, how do we get the horses to do this and, uh, and to lead us in this constellation, I would like to show you a little bit about what the systemic paradigm and the systemic family vision is, um, is, is made of. What is that? So there is a couple of, of foundational um, knowledge that is important for us. So for example, this is um, a, basic, a basic system where we display women in the circles, men with the squares, and then a couple of symbols to show the structure within this family system. So that is the, the background of what we're then showing with the horses or in other modalities with people who represent the different um, elements of the system. So when I talk about a system, that's what I mean. We have the parents here, Anna and John, and they have uh, kids. There is Marco, he's 11, he's the first kid. Then there is one child that was not born, either by a natural um, miscarriage or by a, a wanted abortion, that doesn't matter here for the moment. But unborn children are shown as, um, like I show them as clouds. And then um, we have Lily, who's nine, who is then the third child. So that is something really important when we talk about systems. We don't count only those who are alive in the order. Every child that was conceived, even if it is not born, has a number in the system. And that may be important. The order of the kids is important. And, um, and we will come back to that later. 
So that is, for example, one of the paradigms that we need to know. The timeline or the order of people is important. Okay. Another paradigm is that the system, that family system that I've just shown you, strives for an equilibrium. That means that everything has a consequence. If somebody is excluded, there will be a consequence in the system. The system will try to balance it out, sometimes in smart ways, sometimes in not so smart ways. And um, when something is a secret, it will create more problems because knowing, knowing what has happened, who was involved, why somebody left or is not um, spoken about anymore, the knowing is healing. So we always try to find the secrets because they probably create problems. And if we know something, we assume that that is healing, even if we can't change it. So if um, in my grandmother's generation, a person was excluded, I can't change that now. But just knowing it will change the dynamics of the system. And that is healing. And then, um, and I'll explain that further, children create gravity for couples. So what does that even mean? <laughs> we'll go into that in a second. Do you have any questions about these foundational paradigms? Okay, then let's go on and explore what I mean with gravity. So this, this system here creates a circle of gravity around their children. And here we have a symbol of um, first marriage and then it's crossed out. So these guys are divorced. And let's assume that one of them, John, has a new partner, Susan. And they're in love, but he has kids with his uh, first wife, Anna. And that means that the gravity for him is with Anna. Okay. That may be important um, in how the system plays out and the problems that are created or the, the, efforts of the system to try to create an equilibrium. And that especially is important when there is, when there are more people involved. So the more there are, the more complicated it will become. For example, if now John and Susan also have a kid, and then Anna also has a new partner, but they have no kids. So now, for John, the last child that he has is Martin. And that creates a gravity system with his new uh, wife or partner. For Anna, the only gravity system that exists is still with John because they are the kids. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Okay, these things are sometimes not important at all with the horses, but sometimes you will see that the horses show some kind of gravity that is not understood. And then it makes sense to ask, right? So if there is something that you don't, that doesn't make sense, you will keep asking questions because no client comes in and gives you the entire structure of his entire family system. That's impossible. And you can't even remember it all. So sometimes if the horses show certain attachments or they gravitate towards one person and not towards the other, then I would always ask, well, um, why is that important? Or are there kids involved? Or um, who, who is the father of these children? Um, is there somebody else, et cetera? that can also lead to uncovering secrets. And 
it is remarkable how the horses, but also um, people representatives in the systems know somehow what is going on and they will, they will show it with their actions until you understand. So you could discover in a family constellation that one child has a different father. It goes down to that kind of, of depth or that kind of information, even if the person who is constellating um, doesn't want to give this information or maybe doesn't even have this information. Because somewhere deep down in our hearts, in our cells, we all have this universal knowledge. That's the, that's the, um, the main assumption of the, the systemic family theory that we all know what is going on, just maybe not consciously. And if we open the field for a constellation, we open this knowledge and we, we get access to this knowledge and then secrets can come out and can be shown. Okay, so knowing that, that already gives you a glimpse of the depth and the the, how do I say that? Um, the weight maybe of a constellation. It's not something that you play around with. It's not something that you do like, yeah, sure, let's give it a try. It's not something that you can, that you can do half-hearted. It's either you do it or you don't, right? And you need to have a lot of time to let it all unfold and explore. And you need to have a lot of trust in the in, in this modality. The client needs to have trust because it is possible that you will- Did you finish? Yes. Nana, yes. Do you have a question or? Maybe not. Okay. So let's see what happens when Anna and um, her current partner explore a little bit more. And um, we find out that Serge has an unborn child with his previous partner. Where is the gravity for Anna now. I think it's still still with John, right? Yes. For her, it's still with John. For John, it's with Susan. And for uh, Serge, the partner, Anna's partner, it's with his previous partner, Lucia. Even though there is no born child, right? Sometimes clients will not believe that. And I'm not a um, orthodox family system, uh, systemic family therapy system follower. So I would say this is the, the systemic theory and um, it's okay if it doesn't make sense for you, but, um, but it might have an impact. So let's Let's assume that there is some, some truth to it, okay? It might not be important in this constellation that you're leading, but it could be. So be aware of all these different elements that can come to play, okay? Sometimes I would never say, this is how it is. <laughs> I would say in the, in the systemic theory, we assume that even unborn children create gravity. So there is something going on still with his ex, even though the child is not alive. That could be important. A lot of people have gravity with um, early partners because of an abortion. And that is the secret usually. That is a very common secret that comes out in a constellation. And it might seem unimportant because it's maybe 20 years ago, 
but it has shown in different constellations I have led with the horses and also in others I've witnessed with people that there is something to this. So keep it in mind. Okay. Remember that we want to know the order of kids, also the order of partners and the gravity with different people. That's like our foundation. That's how the family systems are built. And then we can start to understand what is going on with whom and why and etc. So how do we use all this in a, in a session with horses? When we bring horses into this, um, you already know this from regular sessions, their normal, their regular behavior will change and they will, um, they will adopt behavior that is tied to the role they are in, they are, that the client has given them. So the horses feel what is within this morphic that we're creating. Morphic field is the official expression for the field that we're creating with our client where we have access to this universal knowledge. And the horses will react to this what is. What is is how um, the systemic and the constellation people will call what is going on, all the different, the secrets, the, the behavior, the complications is a what is. What is going on in somebody's life? And the horses will show this and react to this through proxemics and through their behavior. Who remembers what proxemics are? We've all learned it. <laughs> Who remembers it? Um, I'm assuming it means where they um, where they're placed or who they pair up with. Or... Yes, exactly. We talked about that in the in the body language class. It's also important for um, for behavior between people and for our body language. Proxemics means where is somebody located how close to each other or how far apart. And that depends on how familiar we are with somebody. If somebody's a friend or not an intimate partner, um, the proxemics are closer. If somebody is just an acquaintance, we, are, we feel more comfortable being further away from them. And the horses will show that with their behavior in a session. Okay, somebody else came in. Hi, Brooke. Hello. So Canada is joining. This is cool. <laughs> Very nice. Okay. So when these horses have been given a role by the client, their behavior intensifies. Usually, um, and I will, I will explain that again. How do we start? How do we get into this constellation? There is some behavior then the client will give a role to the horse who's showing that behavior, and then it intensifies. That is also a cue for us or um, a confirmation for us that we are on the right track. Okay? If the behavior of the horse is really clear, we are on the right track. Once we understand something, it often fades. So once we have, it, have seen it, and accepted it and acknowledged it, the horses could open up the constellation, okay? As facilitators, it's important as in every other session to observe and to confront what is going out on. So you wanna point out what is going on here? What do you see? What does this mean to you? Who are these elements? What, what do we have here? Who just came in? Who left? So um, try to refer to everything that is going on as an element of this constellation and ask your client who this is. Once they have given a role to the horses or to also to objects, right? Sometimes um, this side of the paddock is my future home and this side of the paddock is my current home, could be. Once they do this, you refer to these elements with the given roles or given names. So you don't say anymore, oh, and Blondie is leaning on to Zoe. You say, okay, so 
Who is, okay, so this is your father. And who is this? This is your child self. So you are leaning on to your father. The more you do that and you, the more you really dive into this, the easier it gets. If you are in the logical brain and you're like, well, this is Zoe, this is Blondie, what are they doing here? <laughs> it, it doesn't work as well. You need to really go into that. Let yourself be guided and, and led by the behavior of the horses. Very often, and I'll give you an example later, very often there will be a point in the session, in the constellation, where you feel completely lost. Mm -hmm. That's normal. A constellation takes a lot of time. Plan two hours, maybe three hours. It has to evolve slowly, little by little. And if after an hour you're like, I have no clue what is going on, that is absolutely normal. And you just keep exploring and digging and asking and observing and confronting, and then it will become clear. Okay. All right, so the client has a very, of course, a very important role in this and needs to be totally committed. I would never do a constellation with somebody who is like, yeah, I heard you can do that with horses. I don't really believe that. Like, can we try? Like, no, <laughs> there is no try. Either you do it or you don't. Your client needs to be committed to observe with the heart and to be completely present. If they are distracted, if they don't, you know, don't really buy it or don't really think this makes sense. It doesn't, it doesn't evolve as beautifully as it can. Okay, so it has to be somebody who is, who, um, who really wants to do this. The client needs to find the roles. There is absolutely no way that you can give the roles to the horses. So if your client says, oh, I, I don't know, what do you think? Who could be my dad or who could be my mom? That is not the way it works. Because then you will constellate. That's different, right? You can say, um, well, this horse that is constantly looking at you or really coming close to you, who is that? And they say, oh, I don't know. And you're like, who is another, who is a person in your life who is observing you? How does this observation feel? Is it positive or negative? Is it like a helicopter observation? Or is it a, I see you, I'm here for you, I protect you. So you can lead the client into exploring it more in order to find the roles, but you may never give the roles yourself. If the client says, oh, I have no idea um, and they are not willing to, to go deeper and to find the roles, there is no constellation happening. And you can say that, you know, this, you need to do this and you need to do it with your heart, with your conviction. Otherwise, um, we should do something else, something different. Once they have given the roles, the client will understand visually what is going on. Probably they already know it. There will be a moment when they say, oh, this is exactly how it goes. <laughs> this is exactly how my family looks like or how this situation looks like. But seeing it in front of their eyes and understanding it visually is way deeper than trying to understand or describe it logically. So they can feel what is going on without any filters, without any logical filters. They just see it. It is what is right in front of their eyes. And then you will enter that constellation image with your client or ask your client to go in. And we will talk about that later, what you can do there. But the client will participate in this 
constellation. If you have ever, um, if you have ever done a, um, a constellation with people, you might know that usually the client who's constellating, who's, who's asking for this constellation is more observing than directly participating. So the representatives for the different fam family members will maybe say things or will maybe move, but very often the person is observing. In our case, the person is going in and directly talking to the, to the different members. Okay, so they are creating a dialogue and that dialogue could be around, um, sometimes there is an apology, sometimes there is forgiveness, they could ask for something, they could um, just state something and um, I will explain some, give you some sample phrases um, in a minute, but um, imagine as if they would say to their family members or to these elements, what is important and you need to help them find these important phrases. Okay, so until here. Somebody else came in. Oh, Paula in Chile. Nice. We keep collecting countries. Hola, Paula. Hi. Hola. Oops. Oh, Susanna is in and out. Hola. Hello. We are already. Um, a little advanced, but you can, also, yeah, yeah, yeah. you can also have the recording to, um, to watch the first 30 minutes. Okay, so everybody else, um, until now, can you imagine how this looks like? Or is it still like, oh my God, I don't have a clue. <laughs> we'll go to, you know, how to how to start it, how to lead it, etc. We will be more specific about that. But um, can you imagine how this plays out in a session? Tanya, you have seen it. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Don't worry, Paula. All good. <laughs> mm -hmm. Okay, Adriana, as a newcomer, what do you think? Well, I don't know what to say. <laughs> I've, I've never been to a session yet. So, I mean, I, I have no idea. I'm just <laughs> learning a lot. <laughs> mm -hmm. I've watched, in fact, I watched the movie recently mm -hmm. about constellations and I kind of get what you're saying because of that. I, I have no experience in this, so I'm just learning. Okay. Okay, don't worry. All right, so imagine that you are coming with your client to the paddock. And first of all, um, you need to set the intention, right? What are we going to ask here? What is this constellation for? And we need a very specific uh, goal or question. It's not, Let's just see what unfolds. Um, we can say, okay, let's see what unfolds, but when, who is present, what's the situation more or less like? You need more specific and more specific situation. You cannot say, let's see what unfolds and what kind of what time we are constellating. You need to go in with something specific. Okay. So the client, for example, says, yes, I want to understand. Um, I want to get more insights about um, my very difficult relationship uh, to my sister. And I think that has started when we were both teenagers and my parents separated, for example. So I'm 12, my sister is maybe 15 and um, we lived with my mom, my dad and my grandfather was also living with us. So these are the main people in the constellation. Now, what do you do if you don't have enough horses? You know, somebody could come and says, 
oh, I have nine brothers and sisters, right? I'm like, oh, shoot, I have only six horses <laughs> or four. What, what are we going to do? Would it be like a, a, a certain place or an object that, that plays a role or, or not? Yes, yes, we could use objects. Um, most of the time, um, it limits to the main players. So usually in a constellation, there is maybe two or three other people that are very important. And you can either use a horse for the client or the client himself. So that gives you a little bit, you know, plus one or not. But I have never seen a constellation where I would have needed like 15 horses. Even if there's nine siblings, there is usually, you know, the most important ones are these, or maybe that group of three horses, that's all my siblings. Yeah. And then maybe one of them will be more important. So don't limit it to, oh, too bad. I can't do it because I only have four horses, right? You will find the most important elements and you can say, these four horses will represent the most important players in that situation. And if we need somebody else, then we could use an object or sometimes you get other animals joining in as other important people. I have seen birds come in or dogs come in, um, like stray dogs. I've never seen before. <laughs> and all of a sudden they show up in the session in the paddock and they just sit there and it's like, oh, that's my brother who went to Spain, <laughs> I'm like, all right, <laughs> okay, here he is. And if he then later goes away, then that's okay. It could also happen that other horses, like, I don't know, maybe you have four horses that are with you in the paddock and then other horses that are in an adjacent pasture or further away, they could join, they could come to the fence or they could also play a role like, oh, and these over there, that's the, that's the more distant family or that's my father's side. We never talk to them or something like that. All of that is allowed. And the more open you are, the more it will just like, just like fall into place and just feel right. Yeah. Okay. So after setting the, um, the situation and knowing who is important or what do we want to find out, then there is a moment of a long moment sometimes of silence of waiting of allowing something to unfold right for me it is really important to do the greeting of the herd as well other people other horse constellators don't do that i would recommend to to do it because there will be a deeper connection between the client in the horses, if you allow them to greet everybody and to feel into everybody, okay? Um, Marty asks, can it be elements like the wind or a tree? Yes, absolutely. And um, very often the weather will be part of it. Yeah, but it depends on what you allow. If that feels like cuckoo to you, then just don't, don't go into it. <laughs> That's okay. Uh, but very often it will be part of it. So after setting the intention and greeting the herd, which is very similar to our regular sessions, you need to give it some time until the horses like settle in and show some behavior and the client can give them the different roles. It's not that you come in and you're like, oh, so the brown one over there, that's the biggest one, that's my dad. And then this, no, you should wait until something happens. And in the beginning, your client will say, oh, I don't know which ones are the males and the females. And you'll say, doesn't matter. Just be here. Do, for example, heart focused breathing. Perfect preparation. Heart math breathing or some other relaxation technique. Have them calm down, clear their mind, listen to the trees, to the wind, to the birds. Trust the process. Breathe, wait, don't talk, just wait. And something will happen. Even if the horses look 
frozen and they don't move at all, that is also something happening, right? So the client could say, they're all, nobody's moving, it's all like frozen or, or nobody's looking to me or nobody's caring. That is already part of the constellation. And then you'll ask, okay, so, so who is here? Who can you identify? And then I have never had a constellation where, where there's just silence and I don't know. They will start with somebody. And that somebody will then be the, the start. It's like a domino effect. Start with somebody and then that horse does something and you observe it and then you have the second, the next, the next, the next, the next. It's just like, it shows up. Yeah? Okay, let's go back to our presentation. So the client observes and finds the roles. And then, no, this is too early. Let's go to this first. So the horses, what they can do to show us what is, what is part of this family system is um, what we have also learned in our course. They could come closer, they could move away, they could group. And when they group or when they move, you also always need to ask how that feels. What are they grouping for or what are they coming closer or moving away for? Is it for support or care or do they want to be cared for? Do they group because they feel safer in that group or are they excluding somebody? It does not all have to be love and, and wonderful and, and we all are happy with each other. There will be friction. So the horses could exclude, they could overprotect, they could invade, they could do a lot of things that are not feeling well for the client. Every other behavior like lying down, rolling, um, resting, or being restless, like having some strange movement patterns um, can also have an importance. And sometimes or very often it is about how they look. So this one looks sad or it looks angry or relaxed or happy or whatever it is. Do not ever question that. Yeah, if the client says, oh, this horse looks sad or um, this one is my sister um, because she looks so sad, you cannot say, oh no, this horse is perfectly fine. <laughs> he's, not, he, he's not sad, right? You will, you will go into it and you will deepen it by saying, okay, so your sister is looking sad. Um, is she looking somewhere or is she kind of alone or who else is involved? What does your mother do about this? And then it evolves. So the more you go into the story and talk about the horses as these family members and their behavior, the bigger it will, the bigger it will get, right? The more it will lead you somewhere. And everything else, even completely normal horse behavior, like whinnying, kicking, scratching, whatever it is, all of it will become um, an importance. So let's say the sad looking sister is all of a sudden, I don't know, scratching her skin. And she says, yeah, and my sister has a lot of allergies. And you're like, oh, wow, okay. <laughs> and it all feels like between crazy and magic, but um, it, it all makes sense, right? If the sister has no skin issues, the scratching will just be ignored. So you don't have to point to something. If the horse is like scratching and, and biting themselves constantly, I would ask what is going on there? And then there is probably something. they would say, yeah, my sister's kind of like, I don't know, like uncomfortable in her skin or she was anorexic or she was whatever, right? There is always something behind it. So, you have seen this in our course, the facilitator confronts. And by confronting, I don't mean starting a fight. It's like pointing to stuff. What is going on here? Have you seen that? What does that mean? Who is coming in? Who is that? Who is leaving? Ask a lot of questions. 
and, and point to the important behavior or to the behavior that you see and let your client interpret what they see with their heart. That is not about horses anymore. It's not about horse training and, and, and veterinarian science. It's what they feel because they are in their family system. And the horses are innocent in all that, right? So never assume that, oh, that is not important because that horse is always like that. It doesn't matter. The horses will do something and you will confront the behavior and the client will inter interpret it or even say, oh, I don't know. And it seems unimportant and then you go somewhere else, right? But never ignore something. Um, the horses will do what they feel and that will lead you in that direction, okay? Again, if after a while you feel like completely lost <laughs> and you do not know where this is going, that is normal. It will eventually make sense after a while. It could also be, I have had uh, constellations where some things came up, but we didn't really understand it. And then a couple of days later, the client called me and said, I have to tell you something, this and this happened. And now all of a sudden it doesn't make sense. And these could be things like, I don't know, there's this horse, this is like, like constantly here and kind of, I don't know who that is. It's kind of a, it's a wonderful presence. I, I, I already love him, but I don't know what that is. And, and we never knew in the constellations. And then she called me and said, I'm pregnant. Now I know what this was, <laughs> right? So this horse that we never knew what, what he was, but I kind of loved him. Um, now I know. So they, the client will make sense of it. Sometimes after the session. That's also completely normal. Okay, so let's look at a situation. And <laughs> let's find out a little more about what the horses could do and what that could feel. So um, let's assume this one here, this is us, the facilitator, and this one is our client. So let's first look at <coughs> this situation. What do you, what, just be creative. What could be happening here in this constellation? We have one, two, three horses with the client, and then one horse that is focusing on us, and it could be focusing on us in different modalities. But let's first go into this. What could this be? Be creative. There is no right or wrong answer. What could we have here? The client is petting one of the horses, another one is to the side, one is laying down at his feet. What could this be? Well, the horse that's standing behind the facilitator could be offering the facilitator support. Mm -hmm. um, the horse uh, that's with the client could be, you know, a partner or close family member. Mm -hmm. um, the horse is behind them, you know, that could be, um, you know, someone a little bit more distant in the family, like maybe a sibling or an ex. Mm -hmm. or a child maybe a grown child mm -hmm. the horse laying down could be um either submissive or um could be deceased or yeah, yeah. good good great so that's already a wide range so that's exactly what you will see. 
you know, this one could be a diseased person. It could be somebody who needs care because they are old or they are a baby. And that person could be mourning the loss or could be caring for a baby or caring for an elderly parent or, or being, you know, something like that. It could be an ex-partner. It could be a parent. It could be a child. You will never know. <laughs> you cannot say who is doing what and why. The client is the only person who has insight over that. And if you record a family constellation and, and just look at it from, like, from outside, uh, you might not understand what is going on. If you are there, you will feel like this is important or not important or not important for him. This is going on in his back, on, you know, behind his back. This one is more important. There is more love. There is, you, you feel that but you will not understand who is who if you do not ask. So please ask and never interpret it. Never say, oh, that's so wonderful. That's your mom and the baby. No, it can be anything, right? So uh, for example, in this situation, this was the client, um, the mom who had a new baby who was you know, needed to be cared for. And um, the client is turning to his older sister who was like a mother figure for him. But it could be a lot more, something different, okay? The only thing that you can understand or know what is going on are the horses that support you or that interact directly with you. And there is um, basically two options. So the horse could be supporting you and encouraging you to be present and attentive and, and looking at the scene, or they could block you and like say, oh, you know, that feels uncomfortable. Don't look there. Um, they need some space. They need privacy. Don't watch that, right? It's also part of the morphic field that your client has opened. Or it could be something about you. So let's say it's a different situation, or let's say it's the same different situation. Mom taking care of a young baby and the client is turning uh, towards the older sister for support. If that brings up something in you, like, oh my God, I think I did the same. I kind of lost my first child when the second was born or um, I felt abandoned by my mom when my little brother was born, then the horses could come and shield you and say, okay, so take care of your own stuff first before you take care of this, right? Or they could come in and say, I'm here, you can do this, right? But this horse is directly involved with you and you will know what is going on. If they support you, um, that is okay and that is probably needed in the situation and I would not like shush away the horses and say no 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 go to the client don't work with me I'm fine accept it okay <sighs> like breathe into it and okay so I have my support here that's fine or you could ask the client you know there's a horse that is constantly looking over my shoulder <laughs> um who is that for you maybe they say oh I don't know or they say, yeah, that's my grandmother. She's also, she's helping me like you. Like she's super important. She knows all of this. I have talked to her about this. And, and then they give them a role. Okay. Um, if the horse is blocking you, the best way is acknowledging it. If you just walk around the horse, the horse will do everything to block you again. <laughs> that doesn't solve it. You need to solve it inside, in your heart, not just physically or like pushing them away. They will turn around and stand there again and again and again and again until you solve it within you. So if you like breathe and, um, and you're like, okay, I'll give them some space or I can deal with my thing later and now I'll be here and I'll support this. The horse will just 
fade away, disappear. Okay. And sometimes the client needs a moment and, and you need to be blocked for a while. That's also okay. If a horse is constantly blocking you, I would ask the client directly, it seems that I'm not allowed to watch this. <laughs> is that true? Is there maybe a secret that I should not know about? If there is, this is the most important part of this constellation. So please give me, please allow me to be part of it. Do something to let that blockage go away, but something else than just pushing the horse away. It needs to be solved from, from inside. Okay, so when I say solve. Real quick question, Christine. Yes, so in that situation where maybe there's a secret or you know the client acknowledges there's something that they don't want to share with you, um, what if when you confront it, they still aren't ready to share it or open up? How do you, how would you handle that? Or how do you move forward with the constellation if they're not comfortable with revealing the secret or talking about the secret? Mm -hmm. Great question. Um, sometimes, or often, probably often, no, sometimes, we don't need details. So just acknowledging, yes, there is a secret in this could be enough. Okay. And then if it's important to, you know, to, to go deeper or to know more about it, um, after just saying, yeah, there is something that I, 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 but I can't share that with you. Like, okay, so in this situation, there is a secret and the secret is so big that the horse is blocking me. Okay. Let's take a moment to acknowledge that. That is important. And that might have a lot of implications. So maybe we want to give one horse the role of the secret. Okay. Maybe the one that is blocking me is going to be the secret. Let's see what he or she does. Mm -hmm. Right? And then they could walk right over here and stand next to that horse. And then the client starts to cry and says, yeah, it's my mom's secret but I can't share it where it's my secret or the baby's secret or whatever it is. Okay. So when I say solve, of course, we cannot undo something um, that has already happened. Most of the time there are other people involved. You know, it's not just a client and his, I don't know, home and future home and, and disease or something. There's other people involved. And we cannot change their behavior or their, their knowledge in that situation. So change, changing something does not mean making somebody do something. It is only um, related to our client. And the client, remember that secrets create problems and knowing, acknowledging something will heal and will dissolve the problem. So the client can say things to the different elements and those are healing. Those phrases are healing. So let's look at some of these phrases. Um, these are classic phrases from the systemic theory and from the constellation model. You will hear that um, in constellations with people and with horses. And these phrases, that's like the art of the constellation. Um, if you read them, we'll go through them. If you read them and you're like, I could never come up with that, <laughs> that's okay. Um, it takes a while. It takes some experience. You can do a constellation without the phrases. Um, more so when you start and you have no knowledge about these phrases, it's better to do the constellation without them. Because these phrases are special. It's not just anything you say. It is something generic and true for this specific situation. So it's not, you don't need details, right? It's, it's about clearing the air and, and letting everybody know what is. 
So a very, very common phrase, most common maybe, is I take what is mine and I leave yours to you. That is a phrase that applies for everything related to very often to, uh, to parent situations. My mom was depressive and, um, and she always wanted us to take care of her. And um, I always felt like, I don't know, um, uh, tied down or suppressed and I couldn't do my own things. Okay, we cannot change that, but um, we cannot change mom who's probably still depressed, but we can say, I take what is mine, or I take care of my baggage of my issue, and I leave yours to you. Your depression is yours. Your divorce is yours. Your unhappiness or happiness or a fear or whatever it is, your addiction is yours. I take mine, and I leave yours to you. They could say that, for example, to um, to a sibling who has an addiction problem and the client is trying to solve their sibling's addiction problem. You know, I, I wanna do a consolation because my sister has an addiction problem and I wanna help her. Not possible, you can't. What you need to do is I take what is mine in this situation and I leave yours to you. Okay. Um, another very common one that can start a lot of things is um, saying to a parent figure, I thank you for giving me life. Right? If you don't know what to say, that's a good one to start. Right? Okay, so here is a parent figure and it's like, I don't know, <laughs> not like not really close or happy or I don't know what to say. Okay, first thank them for giving you life. That is always true, right? And it's something that we should do. Sometimes it's only that. So consolations are not about loving everybody and forgiving everybody. It is about saying what is true. And saying that out loud to the horses will create a reaction in the horse and will create a reaction in the person. It can be extremely relieving and healing to say to a parent figure that you maybe are terribly angry with or hate even, or haven't ever talked to, you can say, I thank you for giving me life. Wow, that creates a connection already. Very often that is not enough. So the client could then say something like, I want or I wanted more than just giving me life. And I have not yet given up hope or I have given up hope. I'm done. I wanted more than that. When I was a child, I needed more than that, more than what you gave me, but it's done. I take what is mine and I leave yours to you. So it's not important to say, I wished you had work less and came to my uh, basketball games. It's not important. Stick to the, to the basics, to the, to the basic truth in these sentences. Okay. Um, another one that is going directly, this one um, going directly into the importance of order is you're the first or you're the last or you're the second or whatever it is and will always be honored for that. And that is not only to kids, that could also be to intimate partners, to husbands, wives, um, to siblings, to different relationships, right? Honoring their position in your life is also something quite generic, but really important. It is a way of starting a connection. And when you say that, something else can happen. So for example, we're saying that you are, um, you are my, first, my first sibling. 
right? The one that came, came right after me, where you are my first intimate partner and will always be honored for that. And then maybe that horse turns around and walks away. And then the client could say, oh gosh, such a relief. <laughs> I, I should have said that so long ago. And now it's, it's, it's fine. It's fine. It's just, it just dissolved. Or maybe they come closer and they put their head on the chest. And I ask, okay, so what is, what is he answering to you are the first and will always be honored? And the client says, that's not enough. <laughs> he wants more than that. And then you could say, I know you want more than that. But I take what is mine and I leave yours to you. And then I turn around and leave. That is also true. And clears the connection, clears the air. Okay. The next one, I carry you in my heart and know you had good intentions. What could that be? Who could that be for? What do you think? When could we say something like that? It seems like that would be appropriate for someone who um, may have hurt hurt someone or hurt you. Yes. Or someone who has passed away and did something that was hurtful. Mm -hmm. Yes. Or also somebody we don't um, have any connections with anymore and somebody who is important and yeah, might have not done it all quite in the right way, but we know that it was not out of, you know, malicious, no. right? So for example, um, I don't know, the grandmother in the situation um, she treated my mom uh, in a terrible way. She was so controlling and, and, and they, she always picked fights, but I still loved her and um, I know she had good intentions. So we are not changing her, mm -hmm. right? That is done, but we could say that as kind of a closure. I carry you in my heart and I know you have good intentions. Or I carry you in my heart and uh, I needed more than what you have given me, but I have given up hope, right? So all kinds of combinations are possible depending on the situation. The most important one for me um, that I unfortunately need to use a lot because I've worked a lot with uh, trauma situations, with abuse, domestic violence. Um, as I said, in the systemic work, it's not important to forgive everybody. It's not necessary for the flow of the session to forgive. There are things that cannot be forgiven but your client can decide to let it go and to step away from anger and decide that they are free now or that the other person is free. You're free, free to go. Sometimes that could also happen with a suicide. I step away from my anger and you're free to go. I, I, I don't agree with your decision but I step away from my anger and we're both free now, right? It's not about always, I accept what you did and I forgive you and it's all right and all is fine. No, just say what is. So we have stuff in the chat here. Yeah, Marcia said, yes, a partner that, um, a parent that is not present, for example. I carry you in my heart and know you had good intentions. Exactly. Okay. <clears throat> These phrases are super powerful. 
you need to um, when you when you offer a phrase, I would say try saying this. You can change the wording a little bit. Let's see, you know, what feels right. Try saying this, and then let's modify it a little bit until it's true. Um, let your intuition guide you. If there is a phrase coming to your mind um, that is, you know, doesn't have this is not this is not the full list. There is, I don't know how many million phrases, right? So if a phrase comes to you that you think that needs to be said, give it a try. You could it could be said, and the client is like, nah, no, I'm like okay. That was, you know, we tried that. Let's try something different. Maybe it is, I don't know. You say, I carry you in my heart. I know you had good intentions. Try that. And they say, what was I supposed to say? <laughs> and you repeat it. I carry you in my heart and know you had good intentions. I, no, I can't say that. <laughs> I'm like, okay. <laughs> I refuse to carry you in my heart even though you had good intentions. And then you're like, I refuse to carry in my heart, even though you had good intentions or because you had not good intentions. It, something will come out of it. You will get to the truth. Never force somebody to say something if it doesn't feel right. Suggest it, tweak it, change it. Um, when somebody is, reluctant, like, okay, I'll say it. And then they change the phrase. Sometimes they change the phrase to the opposite and they don't even notice. And then you're like, wait, <laughs> what did you just say? Um, that is important, okay? So let's say that again. Or I thank you for giving me life. That could be a phrase. That is a phrase that is always true, but it could be very hard to say. It's very necessary to say, I thank you for giving me life. And the first time they say it and nobody can even hear it. And you're like, say it again, say it again until it feels true. I thank you for giving me life. That's a relief. <laughs> even if there's nothing else, you gave me life, nothing else. But you did give me life. And I thank you for that. And you should. Right? Okay. So. As I said, finding the right phrase is an art form. <laughs> and some people have that naturally. Um, you can also study it. Like if you do a, a full systemic um, a training, you will, you will learn, you will get a lot of information, a lot of different phrases. If you, lead, if you read, for example, the Hellinger, uh, Bert Hellinger, who is one of the pioneers, of family constellations. He has written a couple of books. There is a lot of phrases in there. You could write them down. Um, in the beginning, I like I had notes and phrases and I tried to memorize them and I never came up with a good phrase. I like, I just, I couldn't. <laughs> and then at some point it just came. I don't know what happened. I just let it go. And now I'm, I'm really good with phrases, but it took a while. I did not trust my phrases in the beginning. Um, if you want to know more about it, you do have to study it a little further. It's just like an introduction, but the, the phrases are a key part of the systemic work. And um, I don't even know how I would teach you to find the right phrase. <laughs> That's difficult, right? But um, experiment. It's about finding truth, not about explaining details it's about finding something that is true Marty. yeah do you always uh, as a practitioner come up with phrases as an idea and then the client is sort of repeating it or in its own way or or can it be that the client just steps in this role automatically and start to say yes things do you have to interfere yes they can um they can start on their own the important part is like the in the consolation work, you try to reduce it to the truth. 
So, yeah. for example, in this situation, um, the white horse is the father figure who is not in contact with my client. And um, the other horse is herself as a child. So she started this with my dad. Um, he didn't want us. He didn't like us. He didn't love us. He was never there. He didn't care. And um, I do want to start a contact, but I, I think he wouldn't want it. And then um, she gave the role to her inner child, not necessarily herself as a child, but her inner child who's seeking that contact to her father. And her inner child went and, and was like leaning. I've never seen that do a horse <laughs> before. Uh, he was leaning on the other horse, as you can say, see here. Like he's touching with his nose and leaning in and staying there. And the other horse is tolerating it which was for her the interpretation of he kind of does want it. He, he, would, he would have it, he would not reject me. He's maybe not able to initiate it, but if I go and make that contact, even if it's only in my heart, he does, he is there, he will stay there. He will let me lean on him, right? And then I said, okay, so um, what does that move inside of you? Tell him. And then they start with, uh, dad, I always thought that blah, blah, blah. And now it's different and now I see. And then I would say, wait a minute, tell him, like, I thank you for giving me life. Um, I want it more than what you have given me. And I have not given up hope. It's important for me to connect. So try to reduce it to the power phrases, to the truth phrases, because if they go into the, blah 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 it's kind of it's diluting it's we, we want to go to the core yeah. so very often the client will start with this and then i would it's not about telling them the entire story it's about finding the core phrase and saying that and and that's something that will kind of shift their energetic balance yeah Okay, something that I like to do, it's not necessarily like a systemic part, is combining it with postures or gestures. So some of you know about the, the embodiment work or we do heart math or you do other you know, body techniques. So giving your phrase company with a posture, maybe like a power posture, um, um, what you gave me was not enough with like a power posture or I carry you in my heart and know you had good intentions. If you, if you combine that with a gesture or posture, it gets, it becomes more powerful, right? You could also, if that is easier for you, you could also do only postures and gestures without phrases and have them say something in their mind and do a, a posture same same kind of powerful okay so in the beginning we said that the horses will show something they will constellate something they will give you an image and then the client enters this image and usually it is to either say something or, or do something and engage with the horses that are representing the different family members. So as I said, sometimes horses that are not even in the same paddock, like here, that one, the paint was on the other side of the fence. He came in and he was important. He had a role. And then those two horses had the main roles and, and there was like a, an act of forgiveness. You can have them hug the horses or pet them or stay there or sit with them or watch them or you know anything that feels right. It only works though if it is truly authentic. Like I would never suggest something like motivate the client to do something that they are not ready for. For example, 
you know, let's make an effort and make peace with your child or with your grandmother. Just go in and hug her. It's not going to work. <laughs> if they don't want to do it, the horses will leave faster than you can watch it, right? They will not tolerate something that is not authentic. So the phrases are better to test your waters, find out what's going on, see if the, how the horses react. They can become uncomfortable or move away or not look at it. And um, then maybe another closer action can come, but it's not necessary. So in, in doubt, stick with the phrases. Sometimes, People, the clients want the horses to listen. Like for example, when they say, when they say um, to their dad, I thank you for giving me life, or what you did cannot be forgiven. And they're like, he's not even looking at me. <laughs> what would you answer? What would you answer? I say the horse is not even looking at me. I would maybe ask him if that really matters. Mm -hmm. Yes. Or I would even go in that, that situation, go one step further and say, um, this is about you. You cannot influence the other people's behavior. This is about you saying that. Mm -hmm and shifting something. If he wants to listen or not, is, is not part of it. Doesn't matter. You can say it anyway. Okay. So when you do this, sometimes you feel <laughs> the horses are doing all kind of acrobatics and everything feels like, oh my God, I don't know <laughs> what is going on here. Right. To try to find an explanation or but it feels like upside down and kind of crazy um that is normal you'll see with experience how it works how it unfolds but your strategies for success are starting strong you need to start with a very strong intention so do some ritual to create that connection like uh, greeting the herd for example I have seen other um, other facilitators, for example, start with a guided meditation where they have a little bell, like this constellation has now started, Bling, they ring a bell or they have like a sound bowl or where they say a specific word. I've, um, when I did a course in this many years ago, they said, I don't remember, I think they said, the client needs to sit to your left or to your right, I don't, I don't remember. It, it, it's something that is not important to me where somebody sits, but for them, it was important. So if there is any ritual around this for you, do it. it anything that, that deepens your uh, connection, the connection of the horses with the client and the serenity of this environment, that's fine. What I have seen work, uh, amazingly is heart math so if you have knowledge about that use heart focused breathing go to inner ease be calm be still in your mind just let things unfold with this trust and ease that what needs to happen will happen it might take it may take a while right if two or three hours Observe with openness and curiosity. The worst mistake that you can do is make up your mind and have like a flight plan. This needs to happen. They need to, I don't know, forgive their brother and make peace with their mom and whatever. No, you do not know that. You need to observe and be open and curious. What else is there? And if the horse, if one horse is reluctant to connect, for example, like observing from a distance, every time we move closer, he moves away. It's not about, oh, that horse is kind of weird today. <laughs> it's not participating. 
explore what else is there. Why does he not come in? And once it is out in the open, he will, right? And it could be something as subtle as, I don't know, this is my firstborn child. Right? My, this is my first son. And uh, he's observing us from the distance. Yeah, he's a little bit arrogant or a little bit, I don't know what. And, and we try to move closer and he moves away and he doesn't want to connect. And um, yeah, but he's so important to me and I don't know what I can do. And, and you like try a little harder or, or relax, whatever. And, um, and it doesn't happen. And then you say, what else is there? Why is, why oh, is there blocking? Why is this not happening? And then maybe it turns out that it's not the first son. Maybe there's another child that was not born. And then they say, yeah, but you know, that was, that was so long ago. And, and I don't want to, I don't like to think about that. When somebody says that, I don't like to think about that. It's like, oh, okay, alarm. <laughs> Here is our secret. This is important. Okay, let's acknowledge you are not, and then maybe they say it to him, you are not my first child. There is another child that was never born with someone. You are my second child. And then all of a sudden the horse will turn around and will walk towards you and will be right in front of you. It's, it, I don't know, it gives me chills just talking about it because that's exactly what happens in these sessions. It's unbelievable how things play out once you get to the truth and just say the truth and why that needs to happen i don't know but um this is healing for the person and if they have tried to hide it or not talk about it then even more it needs to be said and laid out and then things can move on and shift back into equilibrium so you need a lot of patience you need to be attentive. It's super subtle. If that horse is, seems reluctant, he probably is. If that horse is looking at you with, or at them with curiosity or love or something, they probably are. But you need to be attentive and never say something like, oh, those two are always together, or this horse is never interested, or that one is always a cuddler. No. Very often the people will choose roles as the horses are, like close to their natural characters, but it can also be something different. Do not stick to what you know about your horses. Trust the process and trust yourself. You can do it, right? So you need to give it a try, test it. As somebody who's maybe not paying you for a full session, and, and, you know, not somebody you have no, um, no trust situation with, no trust relationship, somebody where you can say, oh, gosh, I'm nervous, or I, I don't know, I'm stuck. Um, and they're like, yeah, let's breathe and, you know, go slowly forward. And then you will become more um, experienced and, and trusting in that process. Now, that said, give it a try. There is mostly two precautions and limitations. The first one is time. This cannot be hurried. So if there is a client who says, yeah, I want to do a consolation, but I only have 70 minutes and then I need to leave to an important meeting, then it's not the right day. You need to have an open end. Uh, I have told you that in regular sessions, it's good to say, I don't know, like an hour or 90 minutes, but stick to that. Constellations are open-ended. I've had constellations uh, that were ended after an hour and sometimes it takes three hours. So I price constellations higher than a regular session. And I tell my clients that we never know how long it takes, could be two or three hours, can also be shorter. But um, we'll know when it is done. And um, we just need to be there until it's done. Brooke, question. I can't hear you. Unmute. Yes. Okay. I was just wondering um, if you ever 
are in this situation, I understand like being patient and also waiting and just, you know, keeping it really chill and allowing and trusting. But is there ever a point where you're a little bit more interactive with certain people who maybe need a little bit more prompting? Like, so, so how does, how does this feel to you right now? And is there anything here that um, feels like it could be relative to what you're inquiring about right now? Um, um, is this hor like, you know, that kind of prompting and questions, because if they're not moving through it, like especially first timers maybe, or people that kind of freeze, maybe some people will maybe go blank and not know how to move forward and just be like overwhelmed or something. Yes, absolutely. So um, you are totally allowed to ask questions or you could say, let's move closer to that one and see what comes up or move closer to this one and see what comes up. And breathe and then step back. And then now to this one, and breathe and step back and half an hour has passed. <laughs> so you are allowed to prompt it and mm -hmm. There is a moment when all of a sudden it's like it gets rolling. Um, I've had I've had constellations where apparently nothing happened in the first 30, 40 minutes because we needed that time to like really get there. And then all of a sudden it starts rolling. And other constellations are like they enter the paddock and the horse says boom, 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 do all kinds of things. Yeah. And and after an hour, we are at that's exactly what it is, but that doesn't answer my question yet, right? So, so it's, all, everything is possible. Um, yeah. Just don't give up if it, if it starts slow. Yeah. Cool, yeah, I just, um, I guess probably to the opening and the meditation and the connection, the whole math or however you start that probably is really helpful too, but. Um, yes. And don't wait for, um, like when you do this opening meditation and you wait for the horses to do something and to get their roles and everything, don't wait for a ginormous something, like all the horses changing position and grouping themselves and doing something. That is not necessary. It will evolve slowly. The horses do something, they get their roles, they do something else. There's a pause, a stillness and something else happens, then you move towards one, you say some phrases, something else happens, whoa, all of a sudden you are somewhere else, a totally different situation. It, it comes slowly, right? The horses are not in any rush. They have a lot of time for that. Okay. And the second one, and that is really, um, that is really a big precaution. Be careful with the truth. So what I mean by that is that we say phrases that are the truth, but I thank you for giving me life. That is a, a, a truth that cannot be, that's not questionable. But other things are. And Try not to stick to, okay, so this is, this is what it is. So we now learned in this constellation that uh, your brother is, um, I don't know, not happy with his wife and uh, he, he has an affair and, and the child is not his and, and all these things that could come out in a constellation. Be really careful that you do not interpret anything and if something comes up as, we just learned this in the constellation, it's like a theory, right? I would never say that's how it is. I would always say, it seems that, or to you, this is true. But your truth is relative. Everybody in your family has a different truth and a different story. So your truth is different to that one of your father or of your mom or of your brothers or of everybody else. So be always aware of that. When something is showing up as, um, it seems that there is another man involved who could 
So maybe it seems here that your dad maybe is not your dad. Let's investigate that, okay? Feel into that. Maybe it, it could be true. It could also be true that this is the love of your life of your mom who wishes that he was your dad. Also a truth, right? There's, there is a lot of subtle nuances in that. If something like that happens, I would always say, okay, this is a possibility. Now try to confirm it. Who could you ask? Right? Go home, talk to your mom, find out a little more about that, find out what else. If this is, if it seemed very important in this constellation, let's find out more about it. That is totally legitimate. Be really careful to say, the horses have shown us that this is not your father. No, ever, <laughs> not ever, right? Really careful. But it can happen. And then also be aware that you are not as innocent as the horses. The horses will show what is going on and what seems right in this constellation, in this morphic field. But your interpretation, what you pay attention to, is about you, not about them. And that is also the biggest problem when we do it with other people, because everybody else will bring in, if you choose representative people, representatives for the different roles, everybody comes with their own baggage, with their own story, and they can shape it. The horses will not shape it because they don't have any agenda, but you might shape it because you think, oh yeah, these two are always they are best buddies or they don't like each other or whatever. So you will also put your filter and your paint over it. The horses are the only ones who have not, no other agenda, right? Okay, so it's an amazing modality, but it is a little tricky. <laughs> so use it wisely, really wisely for Remember that it is about seeing with your heart. Don't try to, to make it right. Don't try to, to find the facts to change, change the logic. Feel it and then it will go into the right direction. Right? So I, I wanna encourage you to give it a try but also know that this is a superpower tool, modality that requires wisdom when we use it. Okay, <coughs> sorry. So questions, and then I'll give you an example and you have to stop me. I know, I think I have told it to Tanya. I'm not sure if I have told it <laughs> to everybody. Um, if I have already shared the story with you, I'll choose another one, but um, let's first see if there's questions. Everybody's like, oh my God, <laughs> I'll, I'll never try. <laughs> Marcia, have you had sessions where, where the horses got into these roles and you kind of found out more information about something that seemed to come from heaven or the universe? Yeah, yeah, but then I, I never had the intention to do constellation, but yes, to give uh, names to the horses, I suggest that sometimes to, to, to give, uh, but also like, for example, anger or uh, sadness or, but yeah, it, it happened that there was a, a family situation uh, involved with the father and uh, uh, older brother. Mm -hmm. And and she, uh, I didn't ask all those questions. I didn't know also all those questions, but yeah, she, she was just talking. Yeah. She started to talk, she started to interpret. And, and I had, um, I had to sort of, stop her to go too much into the drama but i didn't know yes. the tools no yet yeah 
Yeah. Yes, that's a good point. You never want somebody to talk a lot about the drama and about all the terrible things that happened or how awful it was. That that has no room. It's it's fine to say, okay, that's what is. That's what happened. We acknowledge that, and now we see what comes out of there. Yeah. Yes, because it 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 it. it, it it would hold her to watch what was really happening with the horses. I felt at the time that she was going into the story. Yeah. And then, yeah. Mm -hmm. So my favorite, phrase favorite modality is, <clears throat> is combining. So, um, you know, it could start as a constellation. And then I usually close with uh, something more active. The, con the problem of the constellation is that it is very passive. So you can say some phrases, you have maybe a final picture or things then dissolve, but that sometimes leaves this and now what <laughs> feeling with the client. Mm -hmm. So I very often include then something like, like moving the herd or, or you know something something else yeah but sometimes there's people who want um, a, a clear pure constellation and okay then we can stick to that and also if you offer for certain topics it's um it works better than for others so if somebody says i really need to make my relationship with a family member i need to make it better i could suggest um i could say well do you need practical tools to do this because you already know why you are in this situation or do we want to find out why this is happening if the question is oh yeah i want to know why i don't get it <laughs> i have a great relationship to my four kids and my fifth is like i i can't it, I, I can't i don't connect and i want to know why that is a perfect consolation situation and then mm. would suggest it Say, okay, we can, we can try something. Um, if you are fully committed, if you are interested in, in you know, feeling into this and letting the horses guide you, uh, we could try a constellation and see what comes out. I was going to mention to you, like maybe some breathing mm -hmm. for the client, heart breathing. Yes, that is always helpful. That will always at the point where it's like now what well <laughs> yes yeah yes. so i'm um, wondering about the pdf like the slides that you shared on here will you will you send as a pdf yeah i can send them yes or is it where we can find them just with those questions yes i will i can send them to you i'll send them by email with the recording perfect <laughs> okay uh, adriana I have a question yes yeah how do you know when to end the constellation? When to say, okay, this is what we wanted to get to, and this is the final phrase, or whatever you need to do. How do you know it? Um, I cannot explain how we know it, but I tell you that you will know. <laughs> Very <Okay. true. laughs> or, or an oracle answer, but you will know. Um, it's somehow it's like whew, the tension dissolves, something happens. Um, for example, in this, in this picture with the horse leaning onto the father, and then she said something to the father and she said, yeah, I'll try. This is, it's, this is a motivation for me. I'll contact him. I know how to contact him. I'll try. And, um, and she said that. And then there was a moment of pause and then her little inner child um, walked a couple of steps away, laid down, the other horse started grazing and it was like, whew, done. <laughs> we mm. all knew that it was done. So um, okay. something will happen. Okay. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> okay. You'll, you'll, um, You'll remember this when you are further down in your training. I know, I know. Yeah, <laughs> thanks. Okay, <clears throat> Susanna? Yeah, <clears throat> um, 
it's all super fascinating. Unfortunately, my internet cut in and out. So I'm going to have to rewatch the video to get the full scope, but it is really, really powerful. Um, I've done, done family constellation just with humans before, not guiding it, but participating in one. And it was um, so um, healing. Actually, I was one of the people in the, in the group. There was like 20 of us in a circle um, that held space. And we did do uh, my family constellation. And I had no idea how powerful and transformative it would be. And just like in the, in the quantum field, I mean, especially in issues of like forgiveness and, and you, I like that you mentioned not everything needs to be forgiven, you know, like there's no pressure that um, healing has to mean forgiveness for all things, but um, just like in the quantum field, for example, I was working particularly with one relationship um, and I wasn't in contact with that family member for quite some time like you know a couple years or something like that and um and just coming to this place of forgiveness and um recognizing really it was more about me than the other person but it was explained that you know in the quantum field it still affects that other person and um I mean, I would perceive this to be the same, no matter if it's horses or people standing in place to represent other, yeah. other beings, yeah. but that there's, a, it's just like, it's kind of a timeless thing, you know, where yes, we're existing in the present moment, but it, this kind of work kind of transcends the present and can travel back in time and like, just uh, find these these, these um, ways of healing in the past and bring it into the future even. And, and it all just kind of weaves together. I don't really have a good way of explaining it, but um, yeah, I'm, I'm really fascinated by using horses in this way. I mean, I only have the two though, so it doesn't seem like with only two horses, unless it was someone that had, you know, a focus on like two family members, for example, like how would you work what, like what is kind of the minimum number of horses you would need to make this kind of a worthwhile experience I'd, I'd prefer to have more like four yeah four or more but uh -huh. but if you have two and and you move into a constellation with the two it will probably also work okay it will just yeah it will just work and yeah what you said is very <clears throat> it's very true it does move the quantum field or or the universe in in amazing ways i have had so many people call me a couple of days later and tell me you wouldn't believe i came home from this from this session and then the next day my my sister you remember it like i told you that we have not spoken in 50 years and she called me <laughs> <laughs> because, yeah. because I made peace with her in that session where I told her yeah. I'll leave yours to you I don't even mm -hmm. know what it is. I'll leave yours to you and I take mine and I carry mm -hmm. it in my heart and boom she called me I didn't even yeah. get to call her myself she she just called me so that those are it's it's very frequent that that happens um, yeah shift. that's incredible Yes, it really is. And, um, and as you said, that like the forgiveness part, um, in most situations, it is appropriate to forgive somebody. But um, for example, right now, I'm uh, working with a client who had um, an, a sexual abuse experience as a seven year old boy, um, ongoing over almost a year. He was raped by an uncle over and over mm -hmm. again. That is something where I would never push for forgiveness. Right. So that is something that it happened consciously and repeatedly. And um, for him saying, I forgive you, he could say, I'll leave yours to you and I take mine with me. Um, he, he, you know, the, it's not necessary to say, I forgive you for what you've done. Mm -hmm. You could say, this cannot be forgiven but I step away from anger and we're both, mm -hmm. that's different. Yeah. But, but the forgiveness part often has like this, I take responsibility for it. And in this case, it's not what we want. Mm -hmm. 
um, with um, with people who are very active in in yoga or something similar, I've had they are very interesting constellations with the horses. People who are like doing Reiki or are you know doing some energetic work, and very often they ask for the constellation because they want to forgive their abuser. They, they kind of start with this, and then in the constellation, it first travels back to you are allowed to be angry, or we can say, this is not okay. This should not have never happened. This should not happen to anybody. Um, and then maybe in the end, it goes to the forgiveness. But uh, if somebody comes with something like, I want a constellation because I want to forgive my abuser, I would always say, okay, it could come to that, but let's, let's just do it. Like, let's mm -hmm. do the constellation and see what unfolds. And forgiveness is not my main goal and it should not be yours. Like it's, it's let's, let's see what else is there. Yeah. Okay. So um, to close this, I wanna, um, I wanna tell you about the most impactful constellation maybe I've had and impactful because it was so, it was so weird. <laughs> it was so weird while we are in, we were in it that um, I thought I completely lost it. <laughs> I thought like I'm like oh my god, I this is not this is not good. I should not be doing this. <laughs> <laughs> we somehow we like continued and um, and then we came to an ending and uh, and then the client went home and actually confirmed what we found out. So I'll tell you what happened. Um, this, uh, this woman contacts me for a session and she says, you know, I'm a very successful um, business person. I um, have an important job in an important company. I'm super successful. I earn good money. I'm kind of happy with my life, but then I'm not. It, it all feels wrong, wrong. That's the, that's the word for it. It feels wrong and I don't even know why, but I, but I feel detached and I feel like, I don't know. Okay, that's a great, great topic for a constellation. Let's find out why this is going on. You have tried a lot of different ideas and um, let's explore it. So uh, she came and, um, and we started the constellation and uh, they were, we were jumping through time. She started with, let's constellate now. And then we said, no, like this is, this is not now, this is sometime in the past. Um, I'm about maybe, I don't know, maybe teenager. No, I probably am younger. And so it, it took a long time to define it. In the end, we had <clears throat> herself, and um, her parents were there, but they were kind of not important. And there was a grandfather. And the grandfather was um, apparently not really involved in the constellation. He was eating some part of the um, paddock with the head in the bushes and like super engaged in that, not even paying attention to us. But she paid, my client paid attention to it and, and always was looking there and I said, well, what is going on there? And she said, I don't know, my grandfather is doing something and it's like, I don't know, it doesn't feel right. So we went there and um, I said, yeah, he's like super busy and, but he's like, this is happening kind of far away. Um, and no, and the rest of the family, they're all looking in a different direction. They don't, they don't want to see. Maybe they do know, but, but they don't want to see this. And it feels, it feels scary. It feels frightening. And it felt frightening. <clears throat> we had a horse with his head in the bushes, eating all the other horses in a group, looking into the other direction. My client standing there, and everybody felt like, you know, the hair is standing up. It's like, oh, weird frightening <laughs> and uh and we explored like like what kind of frightening she said death 
like weapons, but far away. Okay. <laughs> keep going, keep going, keep exploring. So um, we came to a point where the theory was my grandfather was involved in weapon trafficking in a faraway country financing some kind of war or rebellion or, or selling weapons there and causing a lot of death and a lot of pain. And I was like, oh my God, <laughs> there is a horse with the head in the bushes and that is our theory. <laughs> we are not, this cannot be true. <laughs> this cannot be right. But well, I, you know, I didn't say, you know what, let's stop this, go have a coffee and just not ever talk about it again. I said, well, okay, so, so our theory is that your grandfather was involved in something. She said, weapon trafficking. I'm like, in something that didn't feel or doesn't feel right. And your family maybe knows about it, but doesn't want to look at it. And what he did caused a lot of pain. Right, so that's our theory and that can mean a lot of different things, right? She was super con like confirming, <laughs> she, was, she said, no, no, that, and she worked in, a, some, in some faraway country and I, I, I do recall some of it. And I was like, whoa, <laughs> calm, <laughs> let's see, right? And um, now why would that be important for her initial goal. So she's a successful person, but she doesn't feel entitled or, or it doesn't feel right. So in the systemic theory, as I said in the beginning, everything, every action will have a reaction or a response. And um, especially Bert Hellinger has done a lot of constellations with entire nations or about entire nations about um, war actions. The Second World War, he's German, so he did a lot of work in that. He did work with um, the Israeli conflict and, and other genocide, etc. cetera. And um, he says that very often, if our grandparents or great-grandparents were involved in something that caused a lot of pain, it backfires to some generation where somebody is aware enough and picks that up and wants to make it right. So there could be a correlation between my grandfather being involved in Nazi war and me being a trauma psychologist, right? That could be a direct correlation, a, a direct response of bringing things to an equilibrium. And of course we cannot undo it, but acknowledging it and saying certain phrases can be healing. So for her not feeling entitled to her success and not really feeling right in that role of having success and earning money and, and being you know, important could be tied to her grandfather having caused a lot of pain with illegal actions, right? So it did make sense somehow, <laughs> and then it did not. So well, I, I, I was sticking to, okay, our theory is there is something related to maybe unwanted, illegal, difficult, causing pain, something, trying not to frame it too directly. And then she went home and she investigated and it turned out to be true. So her father, her grandfather was actually selling weapons to an African country years ago um, and was involved in financing some or providing weapons to some kind of armed rebellion and, and uh, causing a lot of death. And she said she had no knowledge about this before and it came out in this constellation. I cannot explain it. But, um, but that's the power of this tool. And I've had other constellations where there was a theory of, you know, maybe this child is from another father or um, 
all kinds of things, all kinds of things. Be careful to like nail it within the session, leave it open. It can always have a lot of different uh, truths behind it. Be careful with interpretation and let your client explore it, investigate it. But um, be warned that um, it is like lifting the blankets. It's, it's incredible what you can find out. Yeah. Okay. So I really want to encourage you to, to, to try it. Right? I mean, this is an introductory class. I want you to, you know, become excited about it and um, maybe you read some more about systemic constellations, about systemic theory. Um, I don't have a, a, a full training on constellations because, not because um, nobody wants it, I've been asked so many times, but because I do not know, I don't know how I would teach it like what i've taught in this class is kind of everything i can teach about it and then you know if we if we did a workshop or something we could do a couple of cancellations and explore it further but but um i honestly don't know how to teach it you need to give it a try and then explore um and let me know if if you try it if you have questions and um, and then build on your expertise little by little. Don't be scared about it. If you stay with listening with your heart, letting your client interpret it, and sticking to the theory, theory, <laughs> you, nothing can go wrong. Right? Trust it, and something will come out. Maybe you don't have this like gigantic revelation. There's also constellations that are um, very apparently like simple, but still life-changing. Doesn't have to be a gigantic secret that is revealed, right? So saying, for example, like the woman in the pictures, um, being motivated to contact her father and, and, and trusting that he does, that he would appreciate that contact because of the other horse leaning into him. Um, that's apparently small, but, but it was not small for her. It's huge for her. Yeah. Okay. All right. Martje, go to bed. <laughs> and um, yeah, thank you. Thank you everyone for being here. Um, smaller group than anticipated, but um, it's always the way it, it should be. So um, it felt more, more intimate, more direct. And um, I thank you so much for your interest in this. And please contact me with your questions, your, your case studies, and then we will develop it a little bit further. Thank you. Okay, thank you. all right. Have Thank you so much, Christina. Thank you. This was a pleasure. Thank you. All. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank good you. Night. Or good, yeah, good. good night now for everybody, I think. <laughs> okay. Okay. Bye. 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 Yeah.